Hello students, welcome to class 6 computer science. So the chapter that I am going to start with today is software and its types. I will be discussing this entire chapter in two parts. So this is the part 1 of this particular chapter. So here at first we need to know about the concept of program. We have already seen the concept of program in the previous chapter but just for a brief revision I am going to discuss the definition again. So what is a program? A program is a set of instructions that instructs the computer to do something. So when we want the computer to perform certain tasks, what do we do? We write some set of instructions. We write some instruction and based on those instructions, the computer will do some tasks. So what, do, what are those set of instructions called? Those set of instructions are known as program. Next, we will go to the main topic of today's discussion which is a software. So what is a software? So if there are there is only one set of instruction then it is known as a program. But if we have a set of programs means if we have more than one program and link them somehow so that they perform as an entity then it is called as a software. So what is a software? A set of programs that works in correlation with each other to solve a set of problems is known as software. So let's try to understand it with the help of an example. So let's say this is the first program. Let's name it as P1. In P1 some set of instructions will be there. Let's say this is the second program. Let's name it as P2. Let's say this is the third program. Let's name it as P3. Okay. Now, if we link all these three programs to each other and if they perform together as a unit, then it will be called as a software. For example, let's say you are planning to make a software related to banking management. Let's say you are making the software for the operation of an ATM machine. In an ATM there are various features. Let's say first program is related to the balance and query feature. Let's say the second program is related to the fund transfer feature. Fund transfer means sending money from your bank account to another. And the third program is let's say it is for cash withdrawal program. Now these programs can be developed individually and after completion all these three programs can be linked and after linking these three programs what we will say that it is a uh, software related to ATM machine. Okay, So this is a software of ATM machine. So have you got a brief idea of a software? I hope yes. So what is a software? A software is a set of programs that works in correlation with each other. So whatever set of programs will be there, there must be some relation be among those programs. If there is a relation among a set of pro programs, then we say it to be a software. What is the purpose of software? The purpose of software is to solve a set of problems. Okay, So it tells the computer to perform operations like input processing and output. So a, basically a computer does three main tasks no matter whatever you are doing but a computer will be do uh, will do these three tasks the first task is input so what is input let's say you are writing your name in your computer let's say the name is r a j so you will type raj where you will type raj in the keyboard that means whatever you are typing through the keyboard or doing through the mouse with the computer it is known as the input after that Computer should understand right that you have written something like R A J Raj. So whatever you have written those will be translated and it is known as the processing part. Okay, and the third is the output. So after writing R A J Raj it should be understood by the computer and after understanding it will be displayed in the monitor and it is known as the output. So remember three basic things are there input processing and output input means sending anything to the computer or writing some instructions to the computer processing means the calculation part okay the calculation part or the translation part it is known as the 
processing and the third is the output output means whatever instructions you are giving to the computer based on that you will get some what you will get some result in the monitor and it is known as the output so basically all these three things are handled by a software it is intangible intangible means you cannot touch a software okay so the term software was first used by john w turkey in the year 1957 so who used the term software for the very first time it was used by john w turkey in which year in the year 1957 i hope the basic concept of software is clear let's proceed further now let's see the types of software so softwares can basically be categorized into two categories first is system software and the second is application software let's begin with system software so what is a system software it may be defined as a collection of programs that controls the overall operation and performance of the computer system so as the word software is there then definitely there will be a collection of programs collection of programs means there will be more than one program so it is a collection of program whose main work is to control the overall operation and performance of the computer system so the basic thing of system software is to see the overall performance of the computer system okay it is basically associated with the maintenance work it will be more clear with an example i'll give the example very soon so it is also responsible for reading data from the input devices and transferring the processed information to the output devices so whatever we are, data we are sending to the computer, it is responsible for taking it to the CPU or the computer's brain and after that bringing it to the output device is also the responsibility of the system software. The main system software used in a computer is known as the operating system. Okay, now let us try to discuss operating system in a little bit detail. So before going to the technical aspect of operating system, let's try to understand it with the help of a simple example. Let's say there is a school bus, okay? The bus in which you travel to the school is called as the school bus. So can that school bus travel on its own if only the bus is there? No, it cannot travel on its own. Now let's say the school bus is there and all the students have got up into the bus. But you see that something is missing here. What is missing? The driver is missing here. Can you see the driver in the school bus? No, there is no driver in the school bus. What are these? These are the students. So if the, only the bus is there, then the bus cannot run. If only, the, if along with the bus, the students are also there, then also it cannot run. So who is responsible for running the bus? The person responsible is the driver okay so in the third image you can see that the driver is here so what is the main work of driver the main work of driver is to run the bus smoothly without the driver even though no matter how good bus you have with ac facilities with tvs and all the entertainment then also it cannot run with the students along with the bus it also it cannot run same and it can only run if the driver is present Okay, so the work of the driver is to maintain the bus properly and to run it effectively along the road. Now let's come to the computerized definition of operating system and see it with the help of an example. Let's say you buy a brand new computer in your home. Okay, and let's say there is no operating system in that particular computer. So the computer is there in your house, let's say you are also there and you are very excited to use your new computer but for using the new computer there is a hindrance now what is the hindrance the hindrance is the operating system that means there is no operating system between these two now so what is the main element or the heart of the computer system the heart of the computer system is the operating system so for using the computer only the computer and the user is not sufficient we require the middle person so the middle object what is the middle object here the middle object is the operating system most of you use the operating system windows 
okay so what is the main work of windows the main work of windows is to communicate with the is to be able to give you the facility so the windows gives you the facility to interact with the computer so let's say you bring a very very powerful computer very powerful most powerful computer in the world but there is no operating system can you run it no for running it you require the middle object which is the windows so it works as an interface between the user and the computer system okay so i hope it is clear now now let's go to the definition of operating system so an operating system acts as an interface interface means the middle object between the user of a computer and the computer hardware so what is hardware the tangible things like the cpu or the monitor or the keyboard or the mouse these are known as the hardware but hardware is of no use without the operating system okay if you have the hardware if you have the operating system and you don't have the user any user to run it can it run no so between the user and the computer there is some object in the between that is known as the operating system i hope it is clear now so i'll give you some examples of operating operating system the most popular one is the windows operating system it is developed by microsoft next is the ubuntu operating system it is a linux distribution operating system now i'll not dive into the details of linux you just have to remember it now as an example of operating system in your higher classes i can talk about linux next we have another operating system which is the mac os mac os is developed by apple okay next we'll see some of the striking features of operating system so what are the features so the first feature is device management memory management then supporting application softwares processor management and file management okay and security is also there now let us discuss each feature of the operating system in brief so the first feature that we are going to discuss is the device management so what is device management an operating system is responsible for the management of input output devices like keyboard mouse monitor etc so operating system will be responsible for taking the data from the input devices to the uh, brain of the computer which is the cpu and from there to the uh, monitor okay so devices like keyboard mouse monitor etc so all these things are managed with the help of operating system next is the memory management okay for storing any data temporarily or permanently memory is required and it is managed by the operating system so an operating system is responsible for allocating memory to various programs whenever required so the memory allocation allocation of memory means giving memory space to the computer is known as allocating memory so it is responsible for allocating memory to various programs so in a computer you can run various programs like ms word ms powerpoint you can play games so for all these things memory is required who is responsible for managing the memory an operating system is responsible for managing the memory by allocating memory next it is also responsible for deallocating memory when not in use let's say you are typing a letter to your friend in ms word and after that after uh, your typing letter is complete that memory should be cleared clearing of memory is known as deallocation so operating system is also responsible for clearing the memory space after and work is complete that means it is also responsible for deallocating memory when it is not in use let's go to the next one which is supporting application softwares so over the operating system operating system basically does not do any work of its own it gives an environment for the application softwares to run so what are application softwares i'll be discussing about application softwares in details in the second part but now i'm just saying it in brief so whatever programs you are running over the operating system like can you use microsoft word without installing the operating system no you cannot use it so over the operating system some programs are running which does some specific work 
those are known as application softwares like ms word ms powerpoint all the games that you were playing in your computer then ms paint and of photoshop all these things are known as application softwares and operating system is responsible for supporting the application softwares so an os is responsible for seamless running of various application softwares so that the application softwares can run properly so this management is done by an operating system some examples of application softwares are ms word ms powerpoint paint adobe photoshop etc next is the processor management so an operating system is responsible for managing the working of processor by allocating various jobs to it so nowadays in computer you can do many work at the same time okay so who does the management of all these works like switching from one work to another it is done by the by an operating system and this feature is known as the processor management next is the file management in a computer there are various files who manages the files like date of creation then date of modification all these things it is managed by an operating system so an operating system keeps track of information regarding creation deletion transfer copy and storage of files in an organized way so that you can store files in an organized manner this management is done by an operating system itself next is the security it is responsible for providing security by means of passwords to prevent misuse of a computer so that a computer cannot be misused so at the very beginning when you start your computer you can you have you can have the facility of setting up a password to the computer why password is required so that your personal information or your data or your programs cannot be misused or it cannot be seen by other users okay so that's all for this particular part so i'll give you some related questions so you need to solve these questions so what are the questions so at first you need to write the definition of software what is a software next who used the term software for the first time i have already discussed it here next mention the types of software available so you mention means you just need to write the names you need not explain it in details what next you need to write what is a system software and give an example of a system software write the definition and give the example next you need to write the definition of operating system what is an operating system next mention the features of operating system and explain any two features in brief so you need need to just mention like write all the features the name of the features and explain any two features in brief okay so these are the questions that you should do i hope that this session is useful i'll see you again in the part 2 of this particular chapter